really what attracted myself and Bruno to this was to go back to London, which had never had a DC uh, do-over. Mm -hmm. You know, um, everywhere else, Metropolis and, and um, Gotham, everybody had got an idea of what that was. So, so creating a world that we hadn't seen before, what was happening in England in the 60s, the look all came from us dreaming about that place. You know, it's like I wanted to go up into the attic and open a box and find an album of like all these songs that I didn't think were written that year and there's airships in them and uh, the uniforms, the military was different. So every, everything in the design of this show was slightly different. You know, if we looked at what the reality was, we'd just send it, what if this happened in history? What if these things are happened? What if there was still um, a armed police force, etc. And um, all of that look came from there. Just trying to be different again and create a world that people want to go to, like almost like our ideal London. Branching off in these different directions, Gotham, Pennyworth, and all this, how excited was that creative? Basically, taking the same methods but exploring these different areas. Brilliant. I mean, when there are two. We went back and forth for quite a long time about which project to do, and, and the reason this was easy to talk about is because Pennyworth doesn't have a backstory. Uh, it was only Michael Caine who, who decided that Pennyworth was in the army, which made a lot, a lot of sense to me, because Bruce Wayne is going to rely on this person, his expertise and his, his patience, and, but also his violence to train him. So I thought that was a great choice. So we explored even further and said, how young would he have been in the military? When did he first get out? Uh, what, how, how has it started? How, you know, so, so all of these things were great. And then that was coupled with the idea of, so who would the villains be for this idealistic young man? And it wasn't just, it would be the system that's trying to keep him down, the class war that's trying to keep him down. It will also be, let's mine the, the, the mythology of English history and great English novels and uh, great villains of the English past. And uh, going all the way back to Dickens or Sherlock Holmes and talking about Jack the Ripper and um, all of these great villains that we could go to. Uh, Jacqueline Hyde, Dick Turpin. And, that, and that's when Myra Hindley came about as being one of the most terrifying women in British history. And that's who all of these characters based on. So England just kept giving us the ammunition we needed to create a world that nobody had seen in the DC universe. Did you uh, kind of resist or maybe embrace giving it kind of a Bondian flavor? No, I mean, it's funny. When you go back to the 60s and you think about, you know, we couldn't help using the Rolling Stones. But, I mean, it's just, there are certain things that that you need to talk about and um, James Bond and what they did it changed British movies and British movies were like either kitchen sink dramas or kind of wacky comedies and what James Bond was was um, Sean Connery was a guy that all men could relate to because he had a working class upbringing and yet he was working for the Queen and so, yes, that was an influence, and John Barry's music was an influence, and the way we shot it was a, a little bit of an influence there. Although, the, you have this romantic version of Bond films, when you go back and watch them now, yeah. they don't hold up. <laughs> After you've seen Skyfall, and you go back and watch Thunderball, you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. It's, but anyway, I still love it. It's, it's like playing an old Beatles album. Yeah, Channeling Sean Connery is okay, buddy. Yeah, he's, he's the only one to talk about. What makes Jack the perfect Pennyworth? Um, I mean, it's um, well, well, myself and Bruno working on this for a year before anybody came into cast. Mm -hmm. and, and it's an impossible thing for any actor to walk into that room. So I think he walked into it five times. And I think he was auditioning for five months, basically. Because um, you need... The, the lead character needs to inhabit that part. He need, that part needs to go to him because he knows it better than you. So I think that was just a question of getting to know somebody for a long time. Because so much of what we rely on now is what Jack is. I mean, when we were trying the costumes on with him for the first time, it had been a long, arduous journey for him. When he put that suit on, and he did that, and we pushed his hair back, then he walked from the, the wardrobe racks to the camera, and I said, I put the camera on him now and I opened the stage door where we were and he did the walk and he looked like Kane and the suit made him walk better and I said confidence, confidence, 
this confidence, whatever happens, you'll just be, you're right. And I said, that calming nature of someone's shoulders are always down, and the way that you can talk to a gardener or the queen in exactly the same way, that's it. And that shot that I did of him at that test is in the main title so at the end, where he walks towards it. I stole that and then animated it with a great um, animated designer. Wow. So, you know, that's how much we love this. <laughs> <laughs> And Thomas Wayne, I mean, he doesn't have much of a backstory except getting killed, really. No, no, he was just like rich dad, you know. Yeah. And so, so now we have to go. Why? Why? Why was Batman? So why? What was the loss, really? What? What's so great about Thomas Wayne? And I think what's great about Batman, we did this in Gotham a little bit. It's not just the entrepreneurship, you know, and not just the generosity, the industrious brilliance. It's the darkness. I mean, he's got about to become Batman. What is in his DNA? What is in Martha Kane's DNA, which is going to make Batman a schizophrenic person? And so that's why when we meet Thomas Wayne, and he is this industrialist, this charming man, what we are, when we peel the onion, the guy's got the dark past, and the, and the guy's actually lying through his teeth through a lot of things. And, and he's he's involved in espionage, and he's rather good at it. So that's where Batman got that. Like Father Life. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.